shops, uh, magic shops. You can get the books in, again, in the magazines for clowns, and you can get the books in um, uh, magic books, the clown books. Uh, I, I, you know, I just keep on rattling if I keep going here. So that's just that. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is switch to uh, switch camera positions, and I'm going to start showing you the different things to do with balloons and how you do them. Mostly, I'm going to be working with. In fact, all I'll be working with is the 260s at this time. The other balloons is is are used in other things that are multiples and advanced type uh, situations. So that is not what I'm going to get into. But what I want to get in, what I want to do is when I'm done here, I want you to be able to pick up a book, look at it, and, and be able to do the things that they ask you to do in that book, okay? And at the end of that time, at the end, I'm going to show you a few of the animals and, and uh, do them real slow for you, and it'll be coming down off of my shoulder so that you'll know what I'm doing. And I'll be explaining some of the moves that I'm doing and why I'm doing those. You'll find, uh, and I won't be talking too much about that, but uh, you'll find that you could be using every finger. I've, I, I've slowed things down enough in these lectures to know that I've used every finger uh, there's times when this finger actually forms things, the small finger comes around and, and puts something in place and forms it, okay? So those are the things that I'll be uh, doing in, a, in, a, in another lecture, but this lecture here, just the different bubbles and how they're made, how to use your hand, how you use the hands, and things. I, I At one of the conventions, I had a, a gal come up to me and she says, I've been learning this thing for a long time, and I still haven't learned how to do it. And I, she said, could you help me a little bit? And I said, sure. I said, sit down and show me what you know. And she sat there, and she started doing a bubble, and then she turned the balloon around and started doing another bubble. And she turned the balloon around and did another bubble. And I looked at her, and I said, you can stop. I said, I know what your problem is. I said, you're... you're Tying, or making a bubble over here, and then you're turning around, and I'm doing that bubble over here, and that's just what she was doing. And then within five minutes, she had learned all the stuff that she needed to learn, but she just, they just had her going backwards and round and round, and she was losing what she was doing. So in five minutes, she was doing real well, you know. So it, it can be done; it's not hard. Uh, and so this is the time we're going to just shut this thing off here. We're going to move the camera and come back and show you some of the moves to make balloon sculptures and how to do them. Okay, this is our second part here now. Uh, what we're going to do is, is show you how to work with balloons. Uh, and one of the first things I want to show you is how to tie them. Uh, a lot of people blow balloons and they Time and their fingers hurt them, and, um, and are, they have trouble tying them, and they got the balloon going in all different directions trying to tie it. Um, I'm going to use this balloon here. This is a 350, just enough air in it to open, keep it wide and um, tied at the end at this point. But this will show you a little bit how to hold the balloon, and then I'll do one, uh, blow it up, and then tie it. I haven't blown any balloons ahead of time. During this part, uh, we're going to blow them up as I go and show you each individual thing. Uh, that way you see and get practice at it at the same time. So here's how I tie balloons. I, I'm right-handed, so I pick the balloon up into my left hand, and this part here would be blowing up, and this part would be the part that's not, and it would be shut off right here to tie. And what I do is I grab this end and pull it around and down so that I got an X across the finger. Let me do that again so you can see that. It's over and down and around. Now I do this because that gives you all the distance that you need. Instead of using two fingers like this, 
or anything. This gives you the distance you need. Doesn't matter how big the finger is here. The idea is to grab this part that goes across here, right across that, and then pinch it and pick it up and just push your thumb forward a little bit and that tilts it right through. Watch how that goes. It just goes right straight through there. I used my other finger to get it to roll through, but it goes right through there. It's just like ties itself. Okay? Once again, here it is. Around the finger, down, and hold it with your thumb. Hold it with your thumb. Grab it right here and twist it right through. And then all you have to do is grab a hold of this, pull it off, and that's how you tie them. I'm going to tie one. I'm going to blow one up now and tie it for you so you can see it happen. Let me pick a good color here. This color here seems to be light enough. So let's say that that's the size I wanted it to be. I'm going to burp it a little bit. And here's the, here's the system. I got it pinched off here. Pull it up, stretch it, pull it down, catch it with my thumb. See the X there? Pick that up and see that? It's already through. I didn't, that's all it is to it. It goes right on through. And you just grab a hold of that and pull your finger out. And there it is. That's as tight as it has to be. You don't want to tie it a little tighter as you go, but that's as tight as it needs to be. I hope that covered it well. Uh, that's tying balloon. I'll tie another one just to make sure. Tie it with a lighter color this time. Same thing. There's funny there. Burp it a little bit. Round the finger down. Catch it with the thumb. There's the X. Pick it up and it's already tied. There it is. Pull the finger out and it's tied. Almost like they do them themselves. Remember the pumped one when you do it with a pump? That when you're done, I have to simulate this one. That when you're done blowing it up with a pump, you're not going to have all of the air that you area you're going to need to tie with. So what you're going to want to do is make yourself a bubble, let the air out so that you have enough room to tie it and then tie it. It's the same system. It's just the fact that you need to make your room to tie well. Okay. When you're blowing balloons up, you need to be certain sizes. Uh, if you're going to do different animals, you're going to learn, you have to learn to blow them up to certain heights. Otherwise, they'll be um, either too long to finish or they'll be too short and you can't finish. So, um, you have to learn to to tie uh, to uh, when you blow them up to size them. And one of the biggest ones that I use my hands when I size a balloon. And one of the biggest uh, items, that, one of the most of, that I blow up, I put that balloon in my hand like this and close my hand around the bottom of it, and that's a good enough for almost three quarters of what I do. That's how much room I need. That's about four inches there that I'm closing off. I'm not going to let it blow up. Okay? And then I'm going to stretch it and get it started. Blow it up. There's my length. I got my length here. And then I can let go of that because I know what the length is. I give it a burp and I give it a tie. Ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to make things. Okay, sometimes it isn't that way at all. Sometimes I have such a small amount of air to put in there that I, I just use certain, um, for instance, remember I told you about blowing a balloon up? Uh, when you first start it, there's a little bubble. Well, there's one balloon that I do, the turtle, for instance. It, only, it gets three of those puffs, and that's as big as a So I go of those puffs. There it is. That's the length I need. Okay. With a little burp and we're ready to go. Now I'll show you the turtle a little later. But that's the way it happens. You use your fingers. Use some way to tell, you know, I need all of this back here. Uh, I don't need it for this one, but uh, to finish it, the tail, the, the little tail is off of here and part of the shell is off of that end for the turtle. 
And so I, and, and you don't need but this much to make it. And some you know, like uh, like a uh, mouse is just a little bit more than that. So it, it's actually one of my first little breaths. I take uh, I, I know to stop about half breath, and then I know I got it long enough for my my mouse, for instance. So that's how you size balloons. And then here's, uh, we're going to show you how to form bubbles. I, I'll, I'll use, um, I use some of these balloons I've already blown up, uh, just to make it a little easier. Um, but basically, when you're when you're making balloons, um, use your hands in the way your hands were built to be used. But your hands are built to be used this way, down. Don't go and start making balloons with your hands up in the air. It makes it difficult, and uh, it um, your hands just aren't built to work that way. So you know, don't don't, don't go like this because it, it's it's out of your way. All right. When you're when you're making bubbles, the only bubble that's important is the one between your fingers here. Okay. And that's all you have to see. So as you're making bubbles, you just keep hiding the other bubbles right under your hand. It doesn't matter. You know which ones they are. You're only interested in making that one that's right here. And you can see that one. Um, before we start making bubbles, I want you to know that, that, that there's a working hand and a vice hand. I, that's the way I describe it anyway. This is my vice hand. I'm, left hand, I'm right handed. So I use my left hand as a vice. And all the left hand's going to do, basically, sometimes it works, but very seldom. Uh, most of the time, it's a vice. All it's going to do is hang onto that balloon. That's it. This hand's going to do all the work. Okay? So this hangs on. This does the twisting. And it always twists in the same direction. I'm always twisting forward. If you switch, if you twist backwards, you, you, you stop yourself at a certain spot. You can't go any farther. If you twist forward, you can practically go all the way around. Okay? But if you go backwards, you can only go so far. And that's not enough to make a bubble. And this way, your fingers can walk, too. And backwards, they don't walk so well. So that's an explanation of that. Vice working hand. Okay? So here we're going to make a bubble. The size of the bubble is determined by where you place your fingers. A lot of people say it's where you squeeze it. You don't have to squeeze it. All you got to do is place your finger and turn this hand. You stop that bubble from turning with your vice. And so where the other one turns, it closes it off where you put your fingers. See that? So you can make bubbles. You just place your finger where you want to make the bubbles. And then now they all need the bubbles. This is the only bubble I'm interested in. That's where I place my fingers. That's where I twist it. Okay. Now the next important thing, I've, I've made uh, four bubbles there. The most important thing to remember is that you hang on to that first bubble. You can let go of the other ones. You have to hang on to the first one and the last one. Okay. Until you lock them. And I'll show you what that means. So in other words, if I were not to hang on to this one, but hang on to that one, then I lose that one, and I lost one down on the other side now because I let loose. As long as you keep keep moving down and hang on to that first bubble, you won't lose bubbles. And sometimes you'll lose bubbles because you don't turn twist them enough. You must do them at least a one complete turn for sure, and and uh, two for a lot of help. And three if you have to. Okay? But, um, so, in other words, then this is the vice. This is the working hand. Twist. Twist. And always hang on to the first one. Don't let go of the last one. It's that same thing. See, you let go of the last one, you lose it there, too. And always let your fingers go. And see where the balloons are going off the other end of the hand? As long, I still got a hold of the first one. I still have a hold of the last one. I can make all the bubbles I want. And that's how to make bubbles. Now, when after you've made bubbles, you need to lock them. Okay? 
Um, so the, these are the bubbles and how uh, different types of bubbles and how they lock together. So in other words, if I were to make them make an animal or a thing, and I started making bubbles, I had bubble here and one here, and here, and here, and here. Okay. If I were to come up and take these two right here, these here, and twist them in that fashion there, I could let go of that and they would stay. Okay? That isn't anything that we do, but that's what can happen. Alright? So let me uh, start again. There's another balloon. Blow it up for you. When you're making animals and things, you need to think about what that bubble is going to form. So in other words, I'm going to do a few bubbles and twist, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a snout for a dog and two ears, and I'm going to stop there and, and, and twist them together to show you what happens. So it's just the dog, so I'm going to, th I'm going to make a snout. I need a snout that long. That's where I start my balloon. That's, that's as long as the snout I want. And then I want an ear. I want an ear down here. So you twist the ear. And then you want the next, the next one is another ear. And you want that ear to be the same size. Then you could do something like this here. You bring this down like this. And here's your vise again, holding this balloon here. And here's your working hand, twisting that balloon down here. Now I have two ears that are the same size, and if I twist these two together, I have a lock. And once they're locked, they'll stay there. You won't lose them. Okay. So that's twist and lock. There is a way to make two of these at the same time. Let's, for instance, take uh, this this here and saying this is our snout now, and I'm going to make. And then I'm going to make another, two, and then I'm going to make two ears. I could start my ear back here, and then come back again, and and mark off my ear. But this takes a squeeze and twist. Okay. Then I have two ears at the same time. I hope that wasn't confusing, but that's two, two ears at the same time. And of course. If you continue on like that, you, you make these a little bit longer, then they become the legs of your dog. Let's make a simple dog quickly, just to show that. Once again, here's that tie. No, nice and easy. We leave it a little loose. Uh, I'll show you why we do that in a minute here. Okay, we're going to make the simple dog. There's the, the snout. There's an ear. There's the other ear. They twist the ears together. I have a neck, and then I have a leg here, and then I have another leg here. Twist. And I got a body, another leg, and another leg. And then there's the tail is left. I twist the other two legs here. I have a, a dog. It's all done. This, this is the snout and ear. And if you keep on going, there's snout and ear, snout ear. You know, I mean, that's all it is. It's uh, two bubbles here, two bubbles there, two bubbles there. And then the other bubbles in between. And, so the the and here's the knot. Yeah, I, she did reminded me to show, uh, to let you know about. Usually if you're, you're done tying and they're loose like this, you might want to finish by pulling on that and making it a little tighter. But one thing that you do is sometimes is we'll be using this part of the balloon again to make things. Uh, for instance, in the tiger, uh, you split this into two more balloon, two more bubbles. Okay, so you got three bubbles here out of this one part here. Uh, and of course, in that one, it's a little bit longer. But by not tying this too tight, we have allowed ourselves room for that to move. See how that moves out? See how that moves out there? Now look at that how bubble. How nice and loose that is to form two more bubbles on there without having any problem. There's two more bubbles. Okay? And here's another move we're going to show you in a, in a minute. And that's the ear. And so I can twist that one bubble. Look at that. 
to make it here, and we're going to show you that right now. So those are just the bubbles and twisting, and then the then we have uh, ears. We call them. I call them ears uh, because that's basically what they form most of the time. Here's the here's a bubble or a balloon, and we're tying it again. There it is. Not, not no problem, and it's tied, and we're ready to um, show you how to make ears on things. Uh, ears come in different sizes. Um, we have cat ears, and we have bear ears, and we have elephant ears. Um, the, the, let's start with the bear ear because the bear ear is basically the same size as the balloon is. We, we're going to make an ear for a bear, and we we just start out. We're going to make this bubble right here. The ear has to be between bubbles. So I have to have, this is just a starter bubble over here. And this is, next bubble is going to be my ear. And, and all I want is a bubble that's as, as long as it is wide, okay? So I just put my fingers over that bubble and twist, and I have that kind of bubble there. It's, this bit, it's as long as it is wide. And then to, to form an ear, I, I pull these two together like this, and grab this this bubble right here with my finger and twist that. Here's my vise again. My vise is over here holding these two and then my working hand is over here and it's best to grab one side here and the other side over there. So you know instead of trying to get in here or trying to do it from here it's better to come from this side and that side and what you want to do is kind of pull it, pull it out and twist it. Okay, and you want that to go a couple of times. And then you do that, then you hit come up with this shape here. And if you put it out like that, it's an ear. See the ear? That's the ear. And we can, can use that in other cases where we want a balloon to come out and, and make a, 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 an L shape. We can use that same item to do that. And we can use this same item to attach something else to it, too. For instance, if we were to make a log cabin or something like that, you know, it could go right around that. So that's the bear ear. Now we're going to make a cat ear. Once again, we're going to have a space. We have to have a place to make the ear. We're going to make the ear down here. And the, and the cat ear is really a, a, a bubble half its size. So in other words, I want a bubble that's only half the size of the, 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 the width of this. And that one's going to be a little bit different because with that one there, you do have to give it a press. Just give it a, a press it down to about half, and then twist it. And look, look at that. About half the size. There it is. Okay. And we're doing the same thing we did this with the bear ear, thumb here, four finger there, twist, and it's smaller. Okay. By being smaller, then it becomes a little bit more pointed. Can you, can you make an animal there and an animal for the cat ears so they can see that being done now? Okay. Kath asked me to make an animal or part of the animal anyway to show the ears being made. So we will start by making the bear. Remember again, remember again the number of bubbles you got to think about them. And the only important one is right here in your hand. Okay, so the bear has got a snout, which is extra long because it comes back through the head. And then it has uh, the side of the head, and then it has the ear, and then it has the top of the head, and then it has another ear. And I'm going to show you these that I'm done. And then it has the other side of the head. And when you do balloons like that, you should think that way, okay? Here's the snout. Here's the side of the head. There's the ear. There's the top of the head. There's the ear. And there's this other side of the head. And if you notice, these two are the same size. Those two are the same size. This one doesn't have to be the same size as anything because it's separate. And this one should be longer, the snout part up here in this end, okay? So now, when you're going to lock in this position, 
you start by locking all of those together so that you can work with them. So you, uh, these f uh, five here are locked together. Once you've done that, you can let go. Okay, and here it is. Then, then you can do the ears. But before you do the ears on this one here, because this is the, um, uh, this has to go past back through there. And remember, we talked about uh, not tying them too tight so that you can pull that knot out and make this a little bit longer so that I can make two, two bubbles out of that. And that gets forced back through. And then, and then we're going to use our vise again over in here to hold all of this while we form the ear on that side. And then turn this around like this and pull up on this side and hold all that together and do the ear on the other side. And you pull the balloon out to twist You pull the balloon, always pull the balloons out to twist. The reason for that is it keeps the, from uh, being friction against these and popping them. One of the things I forgot about earlier, friction pops them. If you make too much of, too much of this stuff, pops balloons, okay? Uh, it won't pop them immediately, but it does. And there's your bare, your bare ears, bare head. And we'll work with some others later. And, and, the, and the cat's the same. It's just that this is smaller in here. And this is smaller. You do only half the size of this. And it still goes through there. It's exactly the same thing. It's got smaller ears. It's got a smaller snout. And that's a cat. I have a question. Yes. Um, have you blown that up enough to finish that for a bear? No, I have not. Okay. I was only demonstrating the head. I had not planned on finishing that. Remember, I always I blow the balloons up using my hand this way for sizing. I would have had to have that much more blown up. And, of course, that would be quite a bit longer because that grows quite a bit more. Try and remember that when you twist the balloon, every time you twist this, you lose a half inch here. So, in other words, let, watch this disappear as I, as I make uh, more and more bubbles, see? That just keeps disappearing more and more. And, but it's about a half an inch for every bus bubble. So, if you're, if you depends on how many bubbles you're going to make, how long this needs to be. Okay. Does that answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that covers bear ears and cat ears. And then, of course, we have what we call... Do you want to make a cat for it just to show well, I thought well? I thought I covered that because I used... Uh, you had just made it smaller. And then we're half of that. Right. So then the elephant ears uh, would work basically in the same way. Um, Except it'd be longer, so it, you still start with the with the head or whatever you have out in front here. And to make an elephant ear, of course, you want it to be longer, so you make it longer, and then you have to twist that on itself. So in order to do that, you have to you'd have to bring these two piece parts together, where you could get them together to twist. So that's what I'm doing here. Bring them together so you can twist them, and there's one elephant ear. Okay, you want the other elephant here, you have to go out here and push that one. And I just used my wrong hand there. But um, now you notice that they're not the same size. And that's a problem with, with when, when you're making this particular thing because uh, when you, you've only sized one ear, then you've got to go and size the other one. So basically, if you want to do that right, what you would do is this. Once again, it's tying. Okay. And I, I'd like to show you the elephant right now, but it's it's a little bit complicated, and show, I show that in my in my next kind of lecture, which is a little bit more advanced. But now I want to make I'm going to make two ears that are going to be exactly the same. In order to do that, I've come down here and I've twisted off the length that I want it to be, and then I'm going to come back here and double up. And if you notice, when you notice back here, I, I demonstrated uh, how to do this for you, 
and as you get better at it, you can do things like this here. 